Today is Monday, November 28th. What to know about severe storms headed toward millions of Americans this week and how the White House is trying to stop a winter surge of COVID-19. Also, some of the most widespread protests China has seen in decades. Plus, the to-do list Congress is tackling from now until the end of the year. Why movie theaters may be getting more new releases and which items are expected to be the most discounted this Cyber Monday. Those stories and more next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. A massive storm system is moving across the U.S. right now. And by the end of the day tomorrow, tens of millions of Americans could get some severe weather. We're talking strong winds, large hail, heavy rain, and even some tornadoes. The National Weather Service says this could impact everyone from eastern Texas to southern Indiana. And people from Illinois to Louisiana should be extra careful since it could hit them tomorrow night after dark. Even before this storm arrives, all schools and some businesses are shut down in Houston, Texas today. But it's not because of weather. The fourth largest city in the country is under a boil water notice, meaning everyone who lives there needs to boil their water before they use it for making food, drinking, bathing, or brushing their teeth. The issue goes back to a power outage yesterday at a water treatment plant that may have let contaminants in the drinking water. The city is now submitting samples for testing. Assuming they all come back okay, the order should be lifted tomorrow morning. Now that millions of Americans have gotten together for Thanksgiving, health officials are bracing for another surge of COVID-19. Dr. Anthony Fauci told NBC News the U.S. is certainly still dealing with the pandemic. And the genetic testing company Helix says COVID-19 positivity is already going up, especially in young adults. It expects that trend to continue through the winter months. It's tough to know exactly how common COVID-19 is right now, though, since these days many people are mostly testing for the virus at home and not reporting their results. And fewer people are going to the hospital and dying from COVID-19 than they were in the early days of the pandemic. That said, it does still happen. The CDC says currently more than 300 Americans die and 3,400 people are hospitalized each day with COVID-19. So the White House is now urging people to get up to date on their vaccines. It's investing hundreds of millions of dollars on outreach and different vaccination events. At this point, the CDC says only 11 percent of the population has gotten all the recommended vaccines and boosters for COVID-19. Protesters have had enough of the strict COVID-19 protocols in China, so much so that they've rallied in several Chinese cities, something that's almost unheard of in the communist country. The latest revolt all started with a deadly fire in an apartment building. Many people thought a COVID lockdown may have left people trapped inside their homes, and it could have hurt firefighters' efforts to get the fire under control, even though public officials say that's not true. People throughout China face pandemic control measures, which can include closing off apartment blocks with steel gates. So over the weekend, huge crowds have started to defy quarantine measures. Others have protested, some even calling for the Chinese president to step down. And that's pretty risky, considering protesters in China could face lengthy prison terms for such a thing. And in some places, there have been reports of violent confrontations between protesters and police. But human rights groups are demanding the Chinese government allow peaceful protests. As of early this morning, some protesters have still been trying to get their voices heard. Today, the city of Chesapeake, Virginia, is holding a vigil to remember six people who died last week in a shooting at a Walmart store. Police are still investigating, but here's an update on what we know so far. Survivors say a Walmart employee walked into the break room and opened fire late Tuesday night. He shot and killed six people, then himself. The victims included a father, a mother, an honor student, and a couple of longtime employees. Two other people had to be rushed to the hospital. Authorities say the shooter bought the gun he used that morning and wrote a note outlining grievances he had with his coworkers and other people in his life. Before this, the gunman had no criminal history, and police say he bought the gun legally. After the shooting, Walmart hosted a Thanksgiving dinner for store employees and their families. Counselors and faith leaders were also there to talk people through what happened. For now, that Walmart store is still closed. Today, Congress is back on Capitol Hill. And once again, President Biden is calling on lawmakers to pass a bill to ban assault-style weapons. The House already passed a bill that does that, so it's up to the Senate now. Remember, the Senate is split 50-50 between Republicans and Democrats right now, and that kind of bill would need 60 votes to pass. So Biden does not have the support from the GOP currently. 
Republicans have said a ban would go against the Second Amendment right to bear arms and would not actually do anything to end gun violence, whereas Democrats say a ban might not solve the problem, but that it could help. So expect more on that debate in the next few weeks. Also on lawmakers' to-do list, passing a critical government funding bill by December 16th. If they don't, parts of the government could shut down. Senators are also expected to take up a defense policy package that would give raises to U.S. service members and pay for new aircraft, ships, and vehicles for combat, among other things. Oh, and then there's the same-sex marriage bill we told you about earlier this month. It basically codifies LGBTQ marriages, so the Supreme Court could not reconsider whether they should be legal. And lawmakers could decide to weigh in on the labor dispute in the railroad industry, forcing unions to accept the deal the Biden administration negotiated earlier this week to avoid a strike. And that's just to name a few of the key issues Congress could take on before this year is out, starting today. To be continued. More news is coming up, but first, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. So I realized over the last year that parenting, unfortunately, does not come with a user manual. Even though as a journalist, I tend to do a lot of research, it frankly stresses me out that there is so much conflicting information for how to go about this very important job of parenting. Well, therapists are trained to help us navigate all of these big life transitions and new challenges in life. Therapy has helped me better cope with the stress and newness of it all and to trust my own instincts and capabilities more. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash newsworthy. Yesterday was one of the busiest travel days of the Thanksgiving holiday. and flight aware shows, more than 6,000 flights were either canceled or delayed in the U.S. Sunday alone. Weather issues like rain, heavy winds, or snow impacted various cities across the country and were a major reason for this. That said, calm weather for most Americans earlier in the holiday break kept flight disruptions low Monday through Saturday last week. An estimated 54.6 million people were expected to travel at least 50 miles or more from their homes this Thanksgiving. Holiday travel in 2022 is officially the busiest it's been since the pandemic began, and it's almost back to the record levels it was at in 2019 before COVID struck. Amazon is reportedly investing big in the big screen. Bloomberg cites sources who are saying that the world's largest online retailer plans to spend more than a billion dollars a year creating new movies to release in theaters. If that actually happens, the report says that would mean something like 12 to 15 new movies for theaters each year. Of course, Amazon already has the video streaming service Prime Video, and the company spent $13 billion on content for its video and music streaming services last year, and it also picked up legendary movie production company MGM. So this latest news gave a boost to movie theater chains' stock, which was seen as a big relief since the industry has been struggling. In fact, Thanksgiving weekend historically has been filled with lots of big-name films, and it's usually one of the busiest movie times of the year. But not this year. With only a couple new releases this past weekend, moviegoers pretty much stayed away. Slim ticket sales show this was the slowest Thanksgiving weekend in box office history. Movie theaters may not have seen impressive numbers, but the online sales from both Thanksgiving and Black Friday shopping have set new records. Adobe Analytics found shoppers spent an all-time high of $5.29 billion online on Thanksgiving Day and a record $9.12 billion online the day after the holiday this year. And that's just online sales, not in-store purchases. It does count mobile orders, though, since close to half, 48% of online Black Friday sales were made on smartphones, also reaching a new high. It was all more than analysts had expected, and it's not over yet. As you probably know, today is also a big shopping day. It's Cyber Monday, expected to be the largest online shopping day of the year once again. Adobe estimates another $11.2 billion in spending online today alone and says computers and furniture are likely to have the biggest discounts. For children and families in need this holiday season, the U.S. Postal Service is looking for thousands of Good Samaritans to lend a generous helping hand. Today, the USPS opened their annual Santa Helper program called Operation Santa. For the last few weeks, children and their families have been sending letters to the Postal Service addressed to Santa. But these aren't always just wish lists. These sometimes turn into stories from kids explaining why their family is having a difficult time this holiday season and needs help. 
Starting today, people can go online to USPSOperationSanta.com and start adopting letters. Typically, that involves finding a letter you like and helping Santa out by sending gifts to the USPS, which then sends it off to the child or family who wrote the letter. Last year, almost 25,000 letters were adopted and more than 21,000 gift packages were shipped. Some families say if it wasn't for this program, their kids would not have had any presents under the tree at all. The USPS Operation Santa program is also open to groups of friends, teammates, and coworkers. Because of the rising cost of inflation and trickier economic conditions, Operation Santa's organizers think this year could be one of their neediest and busiest. That's it for the main news, so now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, thanks to our sponsor, CanvasPrints.com. I know that when I get a personalized gift from someone, it means a little more, right? So if you still need a meaningful gift for people on your list this holiday season, CanvasPrints.com offers so many great options. You can easily turn the photo memories on your phone into the perfect personalized gift. I'm talking beautiful canvas prints, photo blankets, mugs, or puzzles, the list goes on. Plus, the ordering process is truly so easy. Upload your photo, pick your product, and add to cart. That is it. I was pleasantly surprised at how simple it was to order and yet how great the prints are when they arrived. I got a wall display of my family, and I love it. And right now, canvasprints.com has a special offer just for our listeners. Go to canvasprints.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY25 to get 25% off your entire order of canvas prints, canvas wall displays, metal prints, photo tiles, photo blankets and pillows, and much more. Find the perfect holiday gift for everyone on your list and save with this amazing offer. That's canvasprints.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY25 for 25% off your entire order. Okay, now back to Money Monday. So a recent study looked at how much your job needs to pay in order for you to own a home. And it turns out to afford the average monthly U.S. mortgage, you and your family need to be making around $107,000 annually. And that's up from about $73,000 last year. And you need to make more than $200,000 a year to be able to afford a home in eight different U.S. cities right now. That's a record, according to the home buying app Redfin. A big reason for the jump is the huge increase in mortgage rates, which have increased nearly 50% in the last year. And that means home buyers who can't pay all cash are having to shell out more money each month to afford the same average home. Of the eight priciest cities to own a home, seven of them are in California, which may not come as too much of a surprise to people who live in California. San Francisco topped the list. To afford the average home there, you have to pull in $400,000 a year. All right. Thank you so much for listening today and every day and making us part of your routine. If you get value out of the show, please be sure to share it with a friend today. We'll be back with much more news to know tomorrow. For now, have a great day. Hold up. 